morning everyone. Uh, I'm live in Appleton Dock in Nam, otherwise known as Melbourne. It's a major economic pinch point of a system we call Australia. Because I'm up a nine metre monopole. As you can see, I'm quite high off the ground. So I'd like to start by acknowledging that I'm taking action on stolen land. Treaties were never signed, sovereignty was never ceded. And that for the first people of this land, sharing and caring for country has always been a sacred duty. I'm having a conversation with uh, a member of Vic Pyle wants to know if we could do this on the side side of the road, believe it or not. So do you reckon you could come down and do it on the side of the road? So yeah, uh, as I pointed out, we've been trying to do stuff on the side of the road for a long time. But my banner simply says, hope lies in a culture of resistance. And that sums up where I'm at, because it's the only place I can find hope, is in frontline direct action and building a large, a large resistance movement. I'm doing this to show people that it can be done. I'm not the first to do this and I won't be the last. I, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. There's a long line of people who have done this before me, uh, but it's a privilege to do this with a group of amazing activists who are committed to something bigger than themselves. Rational people who understand the severity of the crisis we're in and how fast that window of opportunity is closing in front of us know that there's no hope in this system. This system is designed to extract and exploit and that's what it's done with a callous disregard for human life from the moment it arrived on this continent and no one knows that more than the first people of this land. So if you're greedy and selfish You'll do really well in your system and you get all the shiny toys and you get the beach house and you get the big house on the hill in Turak and you get the ski lodge and you get all the things that this system tells you makes you successful. You can spend thousands of dollars on a suit. That's what this system does and it's the opposite of what we need. So I'm just a working class guy, believe it or not. I drive a truck for a living, I'm on $23 an hour, that's what I do for a job and I'm on long service leave at the moment. I've taken long service leave to make this action happen, to be a part of this action, to put my body on the line for a safe, fair and sustainable world for all the people and all the flora and fauna that live in it. All the creatures that have a right to live. All the people that just want a, a safe life. They don't want to have to fight over things like food. Because that's the sort of dystopia we're heading for if we don't change our current trajectory. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the workers down there wants to know if I've got a working with heights permit. So, yeah, no, we break the law. We just do. The task in front of us is unprecedented. It's monumental in scale. But it doesn't mean it can't be done. It doesn't mean we can't salvage something and build a better world. Capitalism is a cancer cell. And yeah, it's provided a lot of comfort for a lot of people in the last century or so. No one's gonna deny that. But when you look at what it's doing to our ecosystems, our life support systems, it's been incredibly self-indulgent. First Nations people have been trying to warn us since 1788. I've been trying to tell us if you care for country, country will care for you. And with the white supremacist attitude that invaded this land, they were just too arrogant to listen. The first IPCC report came out uh, 1990, 30 years ago. Since then, emissions have gone up by 60%. Uh, the first COP was a year or two after that. And if you look at the graph, after every COP, the emissions keep going up. Biodiversity, crisis, uh, the extinction rate continues to accelerate. The political class, they know exactly what's coming down the line. They know we're heading for a full-blown dystopia and they've still got their foot on the accelerator. They're still wedded to this toxic system and business as usual. What's going to happen when, when you go to the supermarket you can't get enough food on the shelves here? People lost their mind over toilet paper during COVID. If toilet paper makes you lose your mind, what happens when you can't get food to feed your family? And I'm up here because that is the only place I can find hope, is in a culture of resistance. 
We're in totally uncharted territory. The Arctic, the Antarctica, the ice is breaking up. The ice is melting at unprecedented rates. The Amazon, arguably nine of 15 tipping points have already been hit. I think we have the record on this continent for species extinction. And the Great Barrier Reef bleached during a La Nina, which has never happened before. So what chance do you give the Great Barrier Reef in the coming El Nino? You know, so David King, former Chief Scientific Advisor to the UK Government, warned about 12 months ago, he said, what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. Yeah, there you go, evidence gathering team is here. Uh, search and rescue's here too. Uh, I'll come down, I can get down from here in about a minute on my eight. If you'd show me where the hope is, you tell me where the hope is, other than doing this sort of thing, other than direct action. You show me where the hope is, I'll be, I'll be on the ground on the asphalt under a minute. Big love and respect to all my friends who got me up here this morning. I've glued my left hand on, yeah. So the question is to people, what do you want to do about it? Are you just going to sit by and let this happen? Or are you going to roll up your sleeves and get involved? That's our last hope, folks. Resistance. If enough of us rise up, we can do this. We have to do this.